And here we have a, another introduction of the distribution of primes. We claim that the gap between two successive prime numbers can be arbitrarily large. Now when I look at smaller prime numbers, they're really close to each other. But then it's getting the gap gets bigger, right? So in the previous video, we actually show the method of proving that by using factorial. We claim that for the given number n, n factor plus k for k in this range, in other words, they're going to be n, yeah, n minus 1 total composite numbers in this form, all right? Refer to the previous video. Now, today we're going to introduce a Euclidean proof style, you know, for the same conclusion, which is for any n, no matter how big it is, there are going to be at least n consecutive composite numbers, you know, that show that the gap can be as large as n. Now, why we call it Euclidean style? Remember, Euclid proved that there are infinite number of prime numbers. All right, so I'm not going into details. I assume you have seen this before, but basically it's proof by contradiction. If there are finite you know, number of prime numbers, you could construct a new number, which is a product of them, and then plus one. They claim that this number, you know, you're gonna have contradiction, right? So it, it could be, could be a um, prime number. Right. If it's a prime number, then you have contradiction. If it's not, there's also a contradiction. Okay. All right. Here is not the topic. Here's the topic. Here we're going to use similar style to prove the gap of prime number is very big. Okay. Here is approach. So here, since we know for any given n, there's always a prime number greater than that because otherwise prime number will be finite. So let's p be the first prime number that is bigger than n. And we're going to have this product of all the prime number up to p. Yeah? So this is a huge number, right? This is why the, the method is, is called Euclidean style, right? So the product of all prime number here, we claim that the sequence here from 2, 3, 4, up to k, p, that is, you know, all these numbers are composite. How do we ar uh, argue for that? So for example, let's say for the k, right? Where is the p, big p plus k. We claim that if, if k is prime, yeah, then this uh, k must be inside this set here. So k is also, um, must be a part of the p, right? So the whole thing is, is composite, yeah? Because it has a factor of k. Now, if k is composite, yeah, k is composite. So notice that k is smaller than p. So which means all the prime factor of k would be belong to the set, two, three, up to, up to p. In other words, k must be equal to some prime number, you know, let's say, um, you know, pi to the, you know, um, ni's power, and things like that, you know, there's p maybe s to the ns power, but then all these p, pi, whatever ps, must be between 2 and p. You know, in other words, um, that, Whatever that case, for example, this pi here, pi also divides by p. So thus pi divides p plus k. In other words, p plus k is guaranteed to be composite, no matter if k is a prime or not. Okay. So how many of them here? From k is between 2 to p. So there's going to be p minus 1. So we found total p minus 1, which is greater or equal to n consecutive composite number. We have proven the statement, right? So, hope you enjoy the proof. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.